Hello, Kryptonauts, and welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, with my co-host, Jake Jabarelli and Kryptonaut Mike. How's it going, you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good, man. Awesome. Well, we just finished up uh, Crypto Chillin' Chat. Mike, if you just give us an update of what we just did. Yeah, um, just kicked it on Twitter Spaces. Talked about crypto and uh, what's going on with Zillow. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, Jake. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was listening in. I didn't get until late because I didn't know you guys were doing it right off the bat. But <laughs> I was talking to a client, so go figure. But to get into the disclaimer, this content is for entertainment pur purposes only, and any comments made by us, the hosts, or any guests we may have on the show is not financial advice. Thank That's you. The COA. All right, let's get started with your top 10 daily stats. Starting off with Bitcoin, settling at $62,519.27 with a seven-day gain of 6.6% .6 and a market cap of $1.17 trillion. Ethereum coming in second place at $4,558.39 with an amazing seven-day gain of 15.6% and a market cap of $539 billion. Number three, we have Binance Coin, settling at $558.26 with a whopping seven-day gain of 23.9% and a market cap of $94 trillion, billion, excuse me, billion dollars. And number four, we have Solana coming up in number four. Jake, told you, buddy, told yep. you. I told you. <laughs> I told you it was going to pass Tether. Oh, I knew it was going to pass Tether. I just didn't know when. Yeah, so you don't like to gamble at that, man. I know these things. I'm I, Call me the, the Oracle of Crypto. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Solana settling at $240.26 with, with a seven-day gain of gobs and gobs and gobs of 30.9% and a market cap of $72 billion. Number five. USD coin at $1 with a seven day loss of 0.1% and a market gap of $72 billion. Wow, they're neck and neck, huh? Number six, Cardano settling at $2.04 with a seven day gain of 5.9% and a market cap of $65 billion. Number seven, XRP settling at $1.24 with a seven day gain of 24.2%. And a market cap of $58 billion. Number eight, Polkadot, settling at $52.95 with a gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs seven day gain of 30.8%. And a market cap of $55 billion. Number nine, Dogecoin, settling at 26 cents with a seven day gain of 12.3% and a market cap of $35 billion. And number 10, USD coin, coming back up. It kicked Shiba Inu out of the top 10 with a seven-day gain of 0.2% and a market cap of $33 billion. All right, let's take a little oh, glance. Shiba Inu actually dropped out. It, it dropped down 30%. So. Jesus, look at that. It, it is funny because while all the market was going down like a few days ago, Shiba Inu was climbing. Now the market is climbing and Shiba Inu is declining. So it's been like, hmm, is Shiba Inu the uh, watchdog of the reverse? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're saying sorry yep yep you're absolutely right oh let's do the uh, sorry about that the um total market cap of 2.87 trillion dollars i think uh i think by tomorrow because i'm the oracle of crypto it will reach three trillion dollars uh yeah. up by 0.2 yeah, no. percent <laughs> i disagree no no it won't it won't no? it won't reach three trillion by then no we that's no it's, it's too much <laughs> uh i'm gonna say not tomorrow i'm gonna say by the end of the week. By the end of the week. Um, yeah, by Thanksgiving. Uh, by Thanksgiving. Really? That's Thanksgiving? That's a good long. Yep. Yep. He's got a month. <laughs> All right. Make sure you collect your daily candies in, at CoinGecko to get some free awesome NFTs like I'm doing right now. Cool. All right, Jake. So we appreciate everyone who listens to and or watches our 
show on YouTube and on Anchor and any other place you get your podcast. If you like our content, we appreciate giving us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribing to the channel. You can hit the notification bell as well. We post every Wednesday and Sunday. Typically, we're also trying to decide as to when the Crypto Chill and Chat is. As of right now, it's still Sundays in the afternoon, about 3 p.m. Pacific. We also are doing interviews every Thursday until the end of the year. There will be yet another one coming up soon. Uh, please check us out on Discord. Uh, that's where a lot of things are going on. You can also follow us on Twitter. Lots of stuff going on there, too. Uh, we also have a Patreon page. Patreon says different uh, levels of $3, $5, or $10 a month, and that will support us for what we are producing. There's also more content if you go with a higher paying um, support level. And if you don't want to support us in that direction, you can always support us through Binance, uh, donations, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin, or basic attention token. All the links are in the description below on any media that you happen to be listening to. We really appreciate your patronage. Below, below, below. Just got to echo that. Description, yeah. below. Below, below, below. <laughs> All right, Kryptonauts, first news of the day. I will start uh, Jake second and Mike third, please. All right, first news is international Chinese, uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> international Chinese. chess chess federation to launch its own nft marketplace written by jason nelson just in time for the international chess federation world championship this month in dubai the international chess federation f-i-d-e today announced a partnership with ton labs to launch a new nft marketplace dedicated to the sport of chess chess nft.com will feature digital art and collectibles featuring iconic moments in chess one of the oldest games still played chess has seen a resurgence in popularity since Netflix's 2020 ministries, The Queen's Gambit, put put it squarely in the cultural conversation. FIDE has started an exciting and ambitious journey of, of di- digital, digital, uh, digital, I can't say it, digitalization, there you go, di- digitalization to bring new experiences and opportunities to the chess enthusiasts around the world, said FIDE President uh, Arkady de, 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 Vork, de, de what is it? De Vork, de, de, Dvorkovic. 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 Thank you, Dvorkovic. In a press release, we are excited for one of the for one of the first steps to be a comprehensive NFT marketplace coming right in time for the World Championship match in Dubai. Founded in 1924 in Paris, FIDE compri- comprises 195 national chess associ- associations worldwide. TUN, meanwhile, is an offshoot of the failed Telegram Open Network, the popular messenger app Telegram, which was behind the effort, came under SEC scrutiny in 2020 after the agency called its native gram token a security. Though TUN never got past the testnet stages, uh, in May 2020, Ton Labs helped launch the free Ton blockchain using the open source code from the original Ton protocol, pairing the classic and universally loved sport of chess with a world of blockchain and crypto has the uh, capability of bringing chess to the forefront of the minds of the entirely new co- cohorts of fans across the globe, said Ton Labs co-founder and CEO Alexander Fil- uh, Filatov. Filatov went on to say that Tun Labs and FIDE are allowing the wider chess community to explore their passion in a unique, fully decentralized digital capacity through NFTs. This isn't the first time chess has collided with crypto. In 2019, for example, FIDE partnered with Algorand to launch a pop-up museum in Hamburg, Germany, dedicated to the history of blockchain. That same month, World Chess announced a security token offerings alongside Algorand. Mm, interesting. I didn't know about that. That slipped right past me. Cool. All right. Uh, that's interesting to see. I, I, I'm still kind of I think it might be the Queen's Gambit thing that is, you know, kind of popular, repopularized chess. And so they're like, hey, we should do NFTs. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not saying chess isn't a brilliant and honestly very challenging game to some degree I've, to become a master at it. Um, but uh I'm not sure. Some people are going to love this. Some people are going to be like, yeah, who cares? It's chess. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I, I had my stint with chess back in high school. Oh, chess club. <laughs> Ooh, chess club. Right. So. Right, is it Mike's that second or me that's second? Uh, you're next. 
Okay, so with Scott Cipollina's article on Silk Road admin forfeit $667,000 worth of Bitcoin to British authorities. Doesn't sound like that much, right? 10, 10 Bitcoin maybe? <laughs> Thomas White has been ordered to hand over $667,000 or 490,000 pounds worth of Bitcoin by UK's National Crime Agency and NCA per the Sky News. White, 26, ran Silk Road Darknet market following the arrest of Ross Ulbricht, the original creator of the website, in 2013. After the website was shut down by law enforcement, White dropped out of an accounting degree to work on its successor, Silk Road 2.0. In 2019, White pled guilty to drug trafficking, money laundering, as well as producing 464 Category A images of child abuse. That sounds terrible. The world, the worst category of child abuse images, and was jailed for a total of five years and four months. Wow, it seems like he got off easy. Thomas White was a well-regarded member of the original Silk Road hierarchy. He used this to his advantage when the original site was closed down and profited significantly from his criminal activity, said Tyrone Surgeon of the NCA. Silk Road 2.0 was a lot like its predecessor on Silk Road 2.0. Users could make use of Tor or an anonymous web browser or anonymized web browser to access the darknet places, a marketplace and use Bitcoin to purchase illicit goods like drugs. What did you drop there, John? <laughs> I took a hefty commission on purchases, ranging between 1% and 5% on each sale. According to investigators, approximately 96 million, or 73 million pounds, that's $96 million, was spent on the site. Although he had no legitimate income, White paid the 10,700 uh, pounds up front to rent his plush apartment in Liverpool's city waterfront, the NCA added. This proves that crime doesn't pay. Not only has he spent the last two years in prison, he now has to hand over nearly 500,000 pounds. So, yeah, um, crime doesn't pay legitimately. <laughs> John? Mike? Yep. yep. Uh, you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got you. So, it was a boring article. So, Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So the next article is also by Scott Cipollina. And it's crypto exchange BitMEX claims it's now carbon neutral, which Ooh, is weird, cares? but yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, crypto exchange BitMEX now claims it's officially carbon neutral. The announcement follows a previous commitment to achieve carbon neutrality earlier this year. Sustainability is a challenge of our time. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general is a transformative technology of our time, especially around C0P26, not quite sure what that is. It's only natural that crypto faces tough questions about the environmental impact of the technology that enables our work, said BitMEX CEO Alan Alexander uh, in a prepared statement. In May, BitMEX committed to carbon neutrality and began a carbon offsetting program that involved donating at least 0 0.002 cents for every dollar of blockchain fees its clients paid wait what that's how they became carbon neutral <laughs> exactly <laughs> this is a bad article that's hey that's yeah. how that's how the governments do it too man the governments do the same this thing <laughs> let's charge let's charge let's pay let's charge more taxes man that's how we, be, we become carbon neutral jesus Go ahead, Mike. I get. I don't even know how they got the the math on that to make it carbon neutral. One dollar of blockchain fees. Well, like the blockchain fee for Ethereum is different. All right, sorry. This <laughs> this is important because it allows us to migrate the environmental impact of our current activity while we make more structural, long-lasting plans. The CEO added. But does carbon offsetting really work, and what future plans does BitMEX have to improve sustainability? Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin consume an immense amount of energy. Estimates from Cambridge University suggest that if Bitcoin were a country, it would rank among the world's leading countries by annual energy consumption. This, in turn, translates into significant carbon footprint. Bitcoin also produces large amounts of electrical waste or e-waste given the short shelf life of Bitcoin mining machines, which are ASICs. Many companies around the world, not just BitMEX, have adopted a carbon offsetting regimen in order to address issues of sustainability. 
However, carbon offsetting has been frequently criticized as a solution that does too little and too late. One popular example of carbon offsetting is planting new trees. Is a good example of this. So that's pretty much the article. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I still agree with you. I don't understand what uh, charging people more or just taking an extra uh, chunk out of the uh, out of the fee. Explain that to me. Like, what are they doing with it? Yeah, I, I thought they were just going to be remote working. Like, you know, no more office, no overhead on that. But, yeah. Interesting. It'd be nice to see where this math came from. Also be nice to know how much Scott Cipollina got paid for this article. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, hey. Cut him a break. <laughs> I mean, he owns less than one Bitcoin. Next news article written by Andrew Asmakov, Alameda Research, Polychain Capital backed CFI, DeFi, Crypto Exchange, Ascend X. What the heck did I just say? I don't know. Ascend X, a Singapore based crypto trading platform, has today announced it raised $50 million in a Series B round, co led by Polychain Capital and Hack VC. The fundraise also saw participation from Jump Capital and Alameda Research. Other investors in the round include Uncorrelated, I thought that said unicorn for <laughs> include uncorrelated ventures, uh, Eterna Capital, uh, Arch, uh, Arch, Archiron, Archiron, Acheron, Acheron, Acheron Trading, uh, Nothing Research, okay, and Palm Drive Capital with a Series B raise, bringing Ascend X valuations to $455 million. Launched as Bit, Bitmax in 2018 and rebranded in March this year. Ascend X offers cryptocurrency futures and spot trading custody and staking services for for both retail and, and institutional clients. According to the company, it its current use base exceeds 1 million globally. In addition, Ascend X is known for initial exchange offerings, IEOs, with projects like Serum and Solana-based DeFi platforms, offline mapping applications, maps.me, and decentralized cloud computing market marketplace Akash Network among projects that opted for the platform's launchpad. Ascend X is a leader in transitioning crypto projects from primary to secondary markets as seen through the continued success of the tokens listed on the exchange, said Olaf Carson We, founder and CEO at Polychain Capital. We look forward to de uh, deepening our collaboration with Ascend X by providing insight into evolving industry trends and providing guidance on top tier projects to list on the exchange. Let's see more DeFi innovation. Another area of focus for exchanges further expansion and development in decentralized finance products specifically focused on yield generating protocols said Shane Mo Mo Molador, global head of business development at Ascend X. As described on the company's website, Ascend X Earn is a central hub for staking and yield farming as well for the product based on the exchange native token ASD. The offering empowers users to extract the maximum value from their crypto holdings uh, through locking up specific tokens and contributing them on uh, con contributing, contributing them to projects where the funds are used for different protocol functions that generate returns. C commenting on the fundraise, George Cow, CEO and co-founder of Ascend X, stressed the importance of backing from players like Polychain Capital, the San Francisco-based investment firm founded by former Coinbase employee Olaf Carson, we, we, and uh, Alameda Research, which was founded by Sam Bankman-Fried, the billionaire C CEO of crypto exchange FTX. According to Cow, both Polychain and Alameda are among the most prolific investors in the industry and active catalyst of the DeFi ecosystem. Okay. Interesting. There's a lot of big words in there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Andrew Asmakov. Tone it back just a little bit. Please, please, please. Sheeb. Sheeb. From the Decrypt staff, because nobody really wants to cop to this uh, article. Sheeb whale just moved. <laughs> I can't believe you did that, man. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. The sheep whale just moved nearly $3 billion worth of meme coin, of the meme coin, rather. $3 billion. $3 billion. 
Yeah, which means he had like a thousand dollars, you know, in the beginning. <clears throat> Shib Inu, Shib cryptocurrency, has shot to prominence over the past month, briefly overtaking rival dog-themed meme coin Dogecoin. What do you mean rival dog theme? It is the uh, the quintessential dog-themed meme coin. Dogecoin is. I guess we'll just say that Dogecoin is dog-themed. It is. That's what dog-themed. Anyways, enough of this rant. <clears throat> now, one sheep holder who's been who's seen their $8,000 initial investment swell to over $5 billion worth of crypto has moved a massive $2.9 billion, or roughly half, of their holdings between wallets. <clears throat> According to Ethereum Block Explorer Etherscan, the Wales wallet address sent four lots of $10 million. Uh, or is it 10? No, it's more than that. Sorry. Trillion. What is that amount? Trillion. It's, no, it's $10 Million trillion. billion. No, it, it, it's 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 more than that. So we got a uh, million billion trillion. So ten trillion, trillion one hundred thousand sheep on Tuesday, each worth around three hundred sixty-two million dollars today's prices. It's important to note that the whale in question hasn't realized their gains. The sheep hasn't been sold; simply moved between addresses. Sheep and new. Bitcoin is an Ethereum-based cryptocurrency that has made headlines over the past several months, breaking an all-time high after all-time high after all-time high. It's part of the growing list of Doge dog coins. It's Doge coins. They're Doge that appear to be powered by nothing other than the mimetic qualities. According to the cryptocurrency's official website, Sheep was created as an experiment in decentralized, spontaneous community building. Yeah, exactly. Sheep itself has slipped in price by about 10% over the past day to a number I'm not going to say out loud. According to the price tracking site CoinGecko, though its long-term performance is still on a comfortable uptrend, having risen 33.4% on the week and 645% over the past month, fellow meme coin Doge has similarly slipped by a substantial 3.1% over the last 24 hours, while ri rival Floki Inu... <laughs> named after Elon Musk's dog, is up near 13.5% on the day. Another Shiba Inu that has cause to celebrate is Kabuso, or probably Kabosu, the face of the original Doge meme that inspired the all-dog-themed -dog meme coins, who marked her 16th birthday yesterday. Hmm. So there's your Doge news. Thank you, Doge news staff. Bye, Floki. <laughs> Floki. Not financial advice. It's like it's like it's like he's saying "f you" to Loki. Like, yeah, Loki. that's what I, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this next article is also by Scott Chipolina, and it's Russian's most prestigious skyscraper is home to crypto hackers. Report. Okay, so definitely Russia knows how to treat their hackers. In brief, Russia has yet again implicated been in, implicated in a ransomware scandal. The Biden administration has focused on ransomware as a national security threat for months. In Moscow city center, Russia's tall skyscraper, known as Vostok, the, the facilitating business business for hackers, cyber criminals, and money launderers. According to Bloomberg, experts have successfully linked at least four companies that are either based or operating in that tower to launder money associated with ransomware activity. These four companies are SUS OTC, Egg Change, Buy Bitcoin Pro, or Buy Bitcoin, and buy. exactly. That's three companies, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Am I reading that yeah. wrong? Yeah, he didn't, yeah. He didn't have the, the, the comments in the right places. Yeah, where's the fourth one at? Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Suix OCT. Uh, per cited yeah. chain analytics data has processed at least a minimum of $160 million in Bitcoin from illicit high risk resources in the last three months. Wow. Three that's years. A lot. Three years. That was three years, not months. <laughs> oh, last three years. Sorry. <laughs> previously, <laughs> previously, Suix OTC also faced sanctions for helping ransomware groups launder their funds. Exchange faces investigations and in in both the United States and Europe for alleged money laundering. The Treasury Department reportedly declined to comment. Buy oh, Bitcoin Pro per chain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is weird that they would decline to comment. They should have some PR that's like, yeah, yeah. 
This is Russia oh, doing is this to us. Cash bank is the fourth one that he forgot to mention. Oh, well, no, uh, you'll get to it. You'll get to it. <laughs> By Bitcoin Pro per chain analytics has also processed thousands of dollars worth of ransomware funds. A chunk of these funds were processed for Hydra, one of the largest darknet markets in the world and largest in Russia. Uh, interesting. Cash bank right. and, and the fun. Yeah. Cash Bank and the final of four companies was reportedly affiliated with accounts that were flagged by Binance for potentially illicit activities. Binance, in turn, has spent the larger part of a year dealing with a regulatory problem after problem. And they're probably going to have another one with uh, the Squid Game token. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're under investigation <clears throat> yeah. right now. <laughs> you know, first of all, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think Scott Chaplin is smoking that Russian kush because this article came out bunk. I'm just trying to be cool with Maybe. words. <laughs> no. I'm trying to be hip. Anyways, yeah, Binance. Yeah. So last year, Russian spies were found to have used $1 million worth of cryptocurrency to metal in the 2018 midterm elections. Russian nationals, a member of the Ukraine's parliament, and a suspected Russian spy were sanctioned as a result. I don't remember hearing about that. Yeah, I don't remember but... either. No, remember. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Last year, the U.S. Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Assets Control sanctioned 16 groups after further 16 individuals for meddling in the 2020 presidential election. Oh, I yeah. I also didn't hear about that. I, I did. I do recall that, yeah. That I recall, yes. Okay. One company, Second Eye Solutions, which provides fraudulent identity docu documents to buyers, had received over $2.5 million worth of cryptocurrency since 2013. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. I remember them as well. Uh, that, that's pretty much the article. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Russians are hackers. Well, some Russians are hackers, and some Russians are doing very well for themselves as hackers. Black Just, hat. Right. Win, right? Just get some Russian friends, man. That's all you need. I have Russian friends. I live out here in the, in, in the East uh, Sacramento area. There's tons of Russian people out here. Hacker. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go on the next article. And that is where we at. Loop ring. Oh, I want to read the Coinbase one. I guess Jake's taking that one. Right. Loop ring. Uh, you do, you no, do, no, you do no, the, you no, do no, the Coinbase. No, All right, no, fine. No, no. Loop no, rings fine. Ethereum token surges of rumors of GameStop NFT Alliance. What? Written by Andrew, Andrew Hayward. We've already seen what happens when meme, when meme, when meme stock momentum propels GameStop share price, given the early year short squeeze phenomenon. Now we're seeing how a potential association with GameStop can send a an Ethereum token price soaring as well. Recently, GameStop enthusiasts have uncovered purported details suggesting that the retailer will tap Loop Rings Ethereum scaling technology for its upcoming NFT marketplace. Beautiful. Over the last weekend, as the rumors spread, Loop Rings Ethereum-based LRC token has skyrocketed in price. Beautiful. LRC is up 206% over the last seven days per data from CoinGecko. Beautiful. Up to the current price of $1.31 per token. The price is down nearly 11% over the last 24 hours, but the recent jump has seen the rise. Uh, the coin rise from a recent low of about $0.38 cents per token in the past week. On Tuesday, Loop Ring tweeted that it has set a new record of $75 million worth of trading volume. Beautiful. GameStop's <laughs> own stock price is up lately amid speculation over its NFT plan. At current price, at nearly $212 per share, GME is up 21% over the last five days. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty big whopping number, isn't it? Uh, gobs and gobs. Gobs and gobs, yeah. Earlier this year, GameStop stock has hit a price of $483 per share amid the meme stock craze that also encompass stocks like AMC and BlackBerry, aided in a large part by retailers using the Robinhood app. Loopring is a layer 2 scaling solution for Ethereum, the primary blockchain network for NFT collectibles. It enables faster, cheaper transactions by handling them on a separate blockchain before rolling them all up and committing them to the Ethereum mainnet beautiful it's also more energy efficient than pushing all transactions directly to ethereum gamestops first teased its plan for an ethereum based nft marketplace back in may and hired matthew 
uh, Finestone, formerly Loop Ring's head of business, as its head of blockchain. Recently, the retailer has posted several job listings for positions related to NFT collectibles and Web3 gaming plans. Beautiful. Does that mean he's the block blockhead? I mean, blockchain a, head? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. G-M-E-D-D. Is it double D? I don't get it. G M whatever. A resource <laughs> for GameStop stockholders reported last week that new code posted to Loop Rings GitHub repository makes multiple references to GameStop and NFTs. It also points to the interplanetary file system, IPFS, a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized service that effectively backs up websites and files, which GameStop's NFT teaser page previously referenced. Neither GameStop nor Loopring immediately responded to Decrypt's request for comment. Hmm. What do they have oh, brewing up? Well, first of all, um, actually, Mike, you're very, you're very uh, knowledgeable on IPFS. Can you give us a little insight on this little last sentence here? A peer to peer. Is is it true that uh, IPFS backs up websites and files? What's that? Uh, IPFS. Does IPFS yeah. back, backs up websites and files? It can. You can use it to do that. Um, not automatically. You know, IPFS is a pretty broad tool. It can do a lot of different things, mainly data sharing. I will say that I had a buddy apply for a GameStop job for NFT development, Ooh. and they said they need someone with at least four years of experience. Uh, at a company doing NFT development, even though he's been working on it, you know, as a hobby, like a lot consistently for the past four years, that's GameStop need, said man. no. That's so I know. That's, I, I, that's what I said. It's like, dude, you want four years experience in something that didn't really exist as a job four years, like three years ago? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. yeah. More power on him. Yep. Go, so Matthew DiSalvo has an article called Coinbase confirms it's launching a subscription service with zero fees. What? Sounds good to me. Coinbase, Very the biggest good. cryptocurrency exchange in the U.S., or so they claim, is in the process of testing out a new subscription service. The company today confirmed to decrypt. Let me guess, uh, before, you, trying... before, you, before you read on, let me guess, they're going to front charge you a monthly fee to avoid fees later on. I think what they're doing is they're just trying to say, like, we're jealous of Celsius and we want to do the same thing, but because oh. the SEC is up our butt, they, we're going to charge you. We're going to charge you guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Anyways. Uh, company today confirmed to decrypt news of the service leaked. Ooh, geez, that's disgusting. Earlier today, as some Coinbase users prematurely, there's another disgusting word, received access to the beta version of the service last night, which will be called Coinbase One. Very mm. original. Yeah. Users posted screenshots on Twitter of the upcoming product, which said it would be it would give users zero fee trading and prioritize phone support to traders. So why do they call it Coinbase? You're paying a thousand dollars a month to get. Oh wait, not a thousand dollars. Why not call it Coinbase Zero? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Coke Zero. Oh, never mind. Enjoy enjoy zero trading fees on unlimited trades as long as you're a subscriber. One of the screenshots posted said. A price spread may still apply, which means if you're doing a lot of money, they're not really going to take advantage of this. Coinbase told Decrypt that it is indeed working on such a service that it will only make only be available to a handful of users to start with. It is not yet known how much a subscription service would cost. Coinbase has started a testing a subscription product for our customers, a co company spokesperson said in an email. Customers in the test group will have the ability to buy, sell, and convert digital currencies on Coinbase platform without a Coinbase fee for every single trade. Spread fees still apply. We all, we're all we always looking to learn more about how we can best serve our customers in different ways because we're jealous of Celsius. Oh, they didn't say that part. <clears throat> right now, we are still in this early stages, uh, so everything about the future project experience will be shaped by the feedback we receive from our users. The screenshot posted of the beta version also showed that, that the service would include more account protection. If funds in your Coinbase account are stolen by someone you don't know, be stolen by someone you do know, uh, to uh, due to an account takeover, 
you may be eligible for a reimbursement of up to a million dollars in losses. San Francisco-based Coinbase is an exchange, a crypto exchange that prides itself on usability because we don't want to be perceived like Facebook, though it has been the subject of far-reaching criticism regarding its customer service, like Facebook. It's also the first crypto exchange to go public. And that's all I got to say about that. Mm. I don't know. I am, I'm a little bit intrigued. I'm a little intrigued by this. I, but, I, uh, I, need, I need more details. I need more details. Yeah, more I, details. I feel like exactly. they're going to get their money one way or another, man. Coinbase is all about the monies. Nothing is well, free. It's money. not just about getting money. It's about holding the money, too. They want to keep the money. You know? Yeah. Mm. It would be really cool if next uh, cryptocurrency chill and chat, we talked about Celsius. Went deep into it. Let's do it. Just saying, man. Okay, this next article is by Andrew Hayward. And it's NBA player Kevin Durant eyes crypto acquisition with SPAC launch. The NBA star and early Coinbase investor has launched a $200 million SPAC that could merge with or acquire a crypto firm. That's pretty cool. Uh, in brief, Kevin Durant is a business partner with Rich Kellen, Kellerman have launched, uh, launched in SPAC or special purpose acquisition company. The firm is considered acquiring or merging with a private crypto industry company to take it public. Wow. As an early investor in Coinbase, NBA superstar Kevin Durant likely profited handsomely when the cryptocurrency exchange went public earlier this year. I would imagine so. However, he might not be done making moves in the space as an investment firm just launched a SPAC that is looking to into a crypto industry for potential merger to, or acquisition. Today, the SEC published a filing for a new SPAC named Infinite Acquisition Corp for a public offering of up to $200 million. Infinite is a collaboration between 35 ventures, Durant's investment firm with business partner Rich Killiman, and investment and banking firm Lion Tree. A SPAC or special purpose acquisition company is a company created for the sole purpose of merging with or acquiring a private company and taking it public. SPACs are often called the blank check companies and their aim is solely to merge with a private firm such as a startup and help that company uh, um, do an IPO. Wow. Uh, infinite sec Filing suggests a broad scope of potential targets for this type of companies to inquire, including those in the sports, health and wellness, e-commerce, food technology, and supply industries. What do you guys think they're going to target? Hmm. I'm not, not sure. sure. Not sure at all. Think it'll be NFTs? Hmm. Obviously. I think well, it's an NFT-based thing. That's, that's the goal here, right? But I mean, who? I don't know. Uh, so much money involved here. I can definitely see why. It looks like there's a little more info in the next paragraph here. Yeah. However, it highlights cryptocurrency and digital asset firms as a possible pick. In a brief overview of the crypto market, filing highlights exchanges like Coinbase and Kraken uh, leading in, to interest in savings for, or sorry, Interests in saving for services like BlockFi, hardware wallet maker Ledger, and successful NFT NFT related firms, projects like Ethereum based game Axe Infinity and D Dapper Labs, which is the maker of NBA Top Shots. Mm -hmm. These te technologies make the internet ownable, providing new ways to rewind or sorry reward and compensate creators for their work, allowing unbound creativity. It it reads, the driving towards the emergence of potentially massive new platforms to harness this democratization of scarcity. scarcity. All right. Infinite seeks to list on the New York Stock Exchange with the ticker NFT, <laughs> NFNT.U. So, yeah, I, I bet it will be NFTs, something mm -hmm. NFT related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're going to offer 20 million units at $10 a piece. Huh. Sweet. So You guys think you might get into this? No. Well, isn't that the whole point of Raven? Raven was originally allow you to 
break out NFTs for stocks that mm-hmm. you can you can purchase a unique stock. You know, I know obviously not going to use Raven to do it, but I mean that was the point of it. At least that's what uh, Tron Black said to me. Yeah, stock issuant. That was the purpose. And I think, you know, if you could totally do it, but they're probably going to use something else. But at the same time, I I can see that the value there. I mean. Uh, we were talking about the, your your voting technique. The guys were mentioning it in the, in the crypto chill and chat. Was that this was a brilliant way of of accounting for actual voting situations because they're all unique individual uh, a- actions, rather. So mm-hmm. I can see it going. We'll let's just have to see where it goes exactly. But yes, I would be interested somewhat. Yeah. Don't sound too enthusiastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. I mean, whatever. (laughs) I I, I don't know what to say about it. I. I, Yeah. Next news. Written by Jeff Benson. Congress, Congressman Emmer Soto wants SEC to approve a spot market Bitcoin ETF. Yes. Finally, my precious, my pretty precious. Yes, yes, yes. Representative Tom Emmer and Darren Soto, two of the most active leaders of the Congressional Blockchain Caucus, today sent a letter to Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Ginsler about an issue on every crypto investor's mind. Their question, when moon? Uh Uh-oh. When moon? What happened? Oh, we lost Mike. He had to leave. Oh, that's so, right. That's, huh? that's right. Yeah. Gary Gensler. And, uh, their question of why don't we have a Bitcoin ETF? We question why if you are comfortable allowing trading in an ETF based on derivatives contracts, you are not equally or more comfortable allowing trading to, com- to commence in ETFs based on spot Bitcoin, the congressman wrote. Bit, uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs are based directly on the asset, which inherently provides more protection for investors. ETFs are investment products that track the price of an asset or assets. Retail investors can integrate ETFs into their retirement and savings portfolio to get price exposures to different stocks and bonds. A Bitcoin ETF would allow people who don't want to buy and store Bitcoin themselves to still get in on the action instead of buying PTC on the cryptocurrency exchange. They could buy and trade it on a stock exchange. But Bitcoin futures ETFs aren't that. They track the price of investment contracts that speculate on the coming price of BTC. All in all, a more com- complicated venture for average Americans and one that Emmer and Soto believe that can be more volatile and costly. Nonetheless, last month, the SEC, which has, uh, which has for years rejected applications for a Bitcoin ETF, stepped aside to allow trading for Bitcoin futures ETF. Genzer had indicated in August that he was hoping to see such applications which would fall under the Investment Company Act of 1940. When combined with other federal law securities, Genzer claimed in the August speech that set off the mad dash of crypto futures ETF filings. The 40 Act provides significant investor protections. Uh, ostensibly, Ostensibly, that decision was made due to the potential for Bitcoin spot prices to be manipulated or vulnerable to fraud. But Emmer and Soto point out that any fraud or manipulation in the spot market would necessarily bleed over into Bitcoin derivatives. According to the representatives, 90.47% of pricing of the CME, CF, Bitcoin reference rate, BRR, which is a pricing index that CME futures-based ETFs use, is made up on the spot Bitcoin exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, and Bitstamp. If the spot markets are rotten, their derivative markets will be too, they suggest. The congressman insisted that they're not taking sides. They just aren't buying Gensler's argument that derivatives aren't safer. They concluded that unless there are clearer and demonstrable investor protection advantages, investors should have a choice over which products is most suitable for them and their investments of objectives. I absolutely agree, 100%. Please give the investors the options. Yep, I completely agree as well. We're getting there. We're getting there. Two more to go. Um, you kind of feel like this is just an announcement of what's going on right sure. now, but I'm going to read it. Andrew, Andrew Hayward says, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, 
set all-time highs as crypto market tops 2.9 trillion. Yeah. Is that right? Did it change? Did it get to 2 point? Let me check real quick. Nope, still not quite there. Maybe it, maybe it went up already earlier today, but I haven't seen it yet. Getting there, it's getting there, it's getting there, it's getting there. Three of the top ten largest cryptocurrencies by market cap each set a new all-time high price today as recent market market momentum continues apace. Ethereum, Solana, and Polkadot each nudged up to new respective peaks as they've done previously in recent days. Okay, it just sets it going up. While the total crypto market likewise sets a new record. Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency, as if we didn't know, and the leading smart contract blockchain network just set a new all-time high of price of actually it's higher than that, but 4674 according to data from CoinGecko. It's only about $7 higher than the previous peak set on Tuesday, but it's steady gro growth that has propelled a 12% overall increase during the past seven days. Solana is rising even faster right now, hitting a new peak of nearly $237 per coin this afternoon. The Ethereum, that this afternoon being the third, that's just today, uh, if you're listening to it later, yeah. The Ethereum rival has steadily pushed upwards over the past day, beating its previous record of 219 per coin and rising 11% over the past day. It's now up 18% over the past week. As of this writing, Solana's market cap is close to topping that of stablecoin Tether, which it actually already did, to become the fourth largest cryptocurrency market uh, by market cap. Yesterday, Solana flipped Cardano at take the fifth plate spot from the list. Another rising Ethereum rival is Polkadot. Polkadot's been in the top ten forever. Mm -hmm. Has likewise nudged up to. Uh, a new peak price today. Polkadot just passed the $50 mark on Monday for the very first time and hit an all-new all-time high of just under $55 per coin earlier this afternoon. The blockchain network's native cryptocurrency is up 20% on the week. <clears throat> Amid these increases and others of late, including Bitcoin's own all recent all-time high, plus momentum behind metaverse-related coins and tokens, the overall cryptocurrency market is currently at a new peak of 2.91 trillion per coin gecko. Now, that was not completely accurate, but you guys uh, can look for yourself. On I'm telling you, man, coin, coin we're, we're going to be 3, million, 3 trillion. Today, Bitcoin is down 0.3% over the last day uh, at a current price of 63202 As mentioned, the leading cryptocurrency set its own all-time high record last month, hitting 67277 on October 20th. So everyone's hitting new all-time highs, which means you need to do what? Stack, stats, and hodl. That's right. Not just buy. No FOMO. No FOMO. That's the two stats of the day. No FOMO. No FOMO. Last news of the day, written by Mr. Jason Nelson. DeFi tool snapshot now using Colony to rebalance power in DAO voting. In a move that could make blockchain-based voting more transparent and democratic, decentralized voting platform Snapshot, one of the primary tools Web3 groups use to poll community sentiment, has partnered with blockchain protocol Colony to integrate its DAO reputation system. Governance tokens are the crypto asset used to decide the future of a decentralized autonomous organization, also known as a DAO. The community use, uses governance token to vote on projects, funding proposals, elections, and other measures. However, similar to stock in a company, those who hold more tokens usually get in their way. Uh, an unfortunate side effect is the, centralized of, the centralization of power among a few wells within an osten ostensibly decentralized organization. By using Colony's reputation system, Snapshot wants to wants to make the decision-making process more equi equitable. Launched in August 2020 by Snapshot Labs, Snapshot has become a popular platform for DAOs to gauge member sentiment towards a particular course of action. Several DeFi companies and DAOs use the free decentralized voting system to facilitate voting on proposals. Colony, meanwhile, relaunched on the XDAI chain for payment in February 2021 it's a DAO framework to incentivize engagement and generate revenue and growth at a lower cost than with plain Ethereum. Votes on Snapshot cannot be weighed against the contributor's reputation score, which incorporates measures of a contributor's previous work, how much that work was worth, and what peers thought of it. That means that a contributor's reputation can influence the number of tokens they receive for their engagement over time. 
As the DAO ecosystem grows, said Snapshot Labs, head of growth Nathan Van Deer Hayden, it seems likely that we'll see a proliferation of new governance uh, modalities like Colony's Reputation System, which seeks to address the social scalability limitations of token voting. Van Der Hayden believes using Colony's Reputation System is a natural fit for Snapshot because Colony is focused on on-chain governance and has received several users' requests for similar features. And Colony co-founder Jack DeRose, Jack DeRose, the integration of Colony's reputation scored to the Snapshot UI as a way to increase the social aspects of voting. There is a growing demand for DAOs to integrate systems that represent more fairly, uh, more fairly their involvement in the community in terms of voting power. DeRose told Decrypt, DAOs are all about community, so anything we we do can help encourage further involvement. In DAOs is excellent progress yep it's good to it's good to see the community trying to help itself you know, trying to make things more fair and more balanced but it, it, there's a good point you know the more you hold of a coin the more influence you have mm. and that's not that's never let it, it in a more public system let's say uh, a uh, a small town Right. You, you're going to have people who there's going to be somebody in that town who has more money than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Somebody in there is like, let's say most of the people have less than a million dollars, but mm -hmm. one guy or maybe one family has ten million dollars in a in a the idealism of government. That person has no more protection and no more say under the law. But within a DAO, that person could have more say. This is, I think, what they're trying to fix. They're trying to say, no. It needs to be an equal, you know, uh, governance here rather than one person having basically all the control. I mean, but, decentralized autonomous organizations are trying to make it fair, right? So. Right. But what's this whole point here? Let me see. Where was it at? <clears throat> where if your your contributor's reputation can influence the number of tokens they receive for their engagement over time. Right. But it also means that that's basically like clout. Just say. Over time, you have more clout because you've been more participatory with that. But now. isn't that clout worth something in the in the community powers of the DAO? Oh, I know. I, I realize it is. It, it means that you're more trustworthy. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're. Well, actually, no. It probably does mean that your your say has more more say. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that, and this is the thing that's so hard to truly accomplish i thought that's when i was at my church um was there are certain people who just contribute more are those people proud as in you know prideful or are they meek and humble they're highly contributed contributory yet still humble even though people will trust them more they will still be their decisions will still mean more for the community uh, and never more for just themselves. And that's, I think, the key. I'm trying to make a point of this DAO thing. The DAO thing is an attempt to make it fair and make it equally fair. You know, not just fair because it's a fair system. Again, you can't buy your way in. Mm -hmm. um, but a fair system of making it so that everybody treats everybody fairly, you know, equally, evenly. So right. that, yes, you might have more clout within the DAO or within the organization, but your clout is based on your humility or your clout is based on your participation for the community, not just for yourself. Right. But I think that's what Colony is trying to do is trying to is trying to, you know, as they say, it's a DAO's framework to incentivize engagement and generate revenue and growth at a lower cost than with the plain Ethereum. Mm -hmm. so. Wait, where was that at again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, I, uh, good luck. It sounds like they're, they, they, like you said, this is one of those difficult things when when you're trying to equalize the community, not equalize, when you're trying to show fairness in the community and not have, uh, I guess, a balance. conglom a conglomerate come in and just take over, do a takeover. Yeah. You're trying to balance it out. Right? It's tough. Man. The whole point of decentralization is to get away from centralization. If some one unit right. or one entity comes in and takes over the whole DAO, then it's not a DAO anymore. Yeah. Well, it's not just DAOs. It's also blockchains. It's pretty much anything, man. Anybody can come in and just buy things out. 
But if Colony can truly figure it, figure it out, and, and this can actually work, then that's that's an am this is one of those amazing first steps. People probably won't know what it is until it's already there and well established, and then people start to realize, oh, this works, and I'm sure there'll be future evolutions of it. I don't want to get off too far on a tangent, but I do want to make a a contrasting statement about this. Um, Go ahead. The it's going to be it's going to be a little bit controversial just because I'm going to compare it to something that at least in the United States we look very harshly upon. Um, the the apparent end goal of the Dow and of the unification of you know d the distribution of wealth. Obviously, there's not going to be a perfect distribution of wealth, but um, we're trying to get toward a an ideal which was kind of the end game ideal of what ended up fighting in the second world war we fought against the 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 tyranny of well primarily the nazis and and their hegemony um but the uh mm -hmm. then it happened in a couple of other countries oh we lost you there and, for a second sorry can you still hear me yeah i can hear you now if you could just okay, back, so, go back just repeat that all right well i'll I'll just I'm, I'm trying to get to my point and I think the point here is that the community idea and nobody really says it but community is I'm gonna say it communism a communism that we fought in World War two or even thereafter in the Cold War for you know 50 years it's not it's not the screwed up version of communism it's the idealistic version of communism the real true purpose of what communism was supposed to have meant and not what it turned into and the the problem what we see with with that kind of thing is that this ideal people don't like it because it feels like they don't have control. It felt like, well, I have to let somebody else vote on it. I don't get to control. It's not just me. But we're trying to get away from personal control. So the commune or community DAO concept is trying to make it equal of all the people who are shareholders instead of saying, oh, well, you own, you know, 51 percent of all this DAO, which means you have voting rights on all of it. So we don't get to, you know, you have control instead of the decentralized control we're trying to make out of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to make my two Satoshis out of this by saying that the ideal of communism or community in this case is making it fair for everyone. Everyone has to say, everyone gets an equal say, everyone gets an equal control, and we all vote together as a community. As opposed to Samsung said, what Samsung says goes. What Samsung shareholders say goes. What Microsoft shareholders say go. We want money. We don't care about. Or oh, Facebook is the best example in this. Because Facebook is the one that, you know, basically put profits above everything else, and that's what. That's why they're in this huge debacle right now. Yeah, I really didn't it's, want a flip phone. I wanted it's a putting. Phone. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's trying to put, um, the the ideal of the community ahead of the ideal of profits. So. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hopefully, hopefully that's what we get. Nice. So, let's go ahead and end it there. I think that's a good time. We're about uh, almost at the one hour marker. We can fill in for about a minute. And I can uh, just let the community know that we do have a uh, crypto chill in chat. Uh, we're going to be transitioning that over, or migrating, excuse me. We're going to migrate that over to Twitter. We got a lot of positive feedback there. And I think, uh, yeah, you agree, Jake? You think Twitter is a good no, fit? I think that's. I think Twitter Live is a pretty cool idea because yeah. you can access it's, it. A lot it's more a, people have Twitter accounts than they have Discord accounts. So. Yeah, it's it's a new it's a new feature. It's still in beta, but it's already well accepted. People really like it. Yeah. And for the Crypto Chill and Chat series, because we're seeking more, um, we're opening the door to the podcast to allow people to come in with their ideas on crypto, and answer questions if if we're able to, or just ask the community. If they can help and answer questions, that's what we're trying to share here with Crypto Chill and Chat. And it seems like it's a uh, it's a good place, a good hub to come hang out. So if you haven't followed us yet, make sure you follow us at Blockchain John at Twitter and Jake is it uh, Jabberelli or at Jake Jabberelli? Yep, at at Jabberelli. Just at Jabberelli. Jabberelli. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and close this out, Jake. Cool, man. All right. So uh, we appreciate everyone uh, who has already subscribed. Thank you very much for subscribing. If you have not yet subscribed and you do and you do appreciate the content that we've put out today, we appreciate the like and the subscribe. If you continue hearing us, hit the notification bell. 
put it out every Wednesday, which is today, and every Sunday. And like you said, like John mentioned, we're going to be having a Crypto Challenge chat on Twitter live now. Check us out on Discord. You can also get the information from our Discord and have discussions much similar to the Crypto Challenge chat. We're on Patreon now as well. They have the $3, $5, and $10 uh, contribution levels that are per month. At the, at the higher levels, you get access to things like uh, Ask Me Anything or AMAs, as well as additional uh, interview information from the people that we've interviewed. And if you'd like to just support us directly, you can support us through Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, and Basic Attention Token. All the links and all the donation addresses are in the description below. Thanks for listening. Perfect timing. With that said, Kryptonauts, until next time, stack sets and huddle. Adios.